Hallelujah. All of your wishes will be fulfilled during this blessed time. Today, you and me, in our life, there's many times that we're disappointed. But between Jesus and the disciples, who are they? They didn't even graduate from kindergarten. But those people, this truth of God made it happen today. So what does that say? You and I, you're, when you suffer and it doesn't work for you and you make your children commit suicide and for them to commit sins and run away from home, it's because of the parents and, and their children's sins from their heart. So why are you always looking for number one? Your inside may be white, but your outside is black. But your inside may be black, but your outside is white. It's all the same. So why are you looking for number one all the time and, and putting pressure on your children? There's no other reason other than why you're suffering. It's because of James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. It's all because of greed. My children, I want to send them to best schools. From starting with that, you're killing your children. Not They're already suffering because of ancestors' transgressions and their own sins, and cal calamity has been passed down, and you're so two-faced, and, and you still want to send them to number one schools? Even, and even the children themselves, they, want to, they, they themselves want to learn, go, go to best schools too. It's all lies that they're going to learn. So what is, what is the best? If you want to be a professor there, then you shouldn't even be a, pro, a teacher at kindergarten school. Why do you want to give bad name to our country? You say amen. But to your children, what kind of pressure are you giving to them? And you're sitting there being very shameless. Honey, you have to go to number one. But what is number one? Wherever you go, it's the same sin. Your children right now are suffering and they don't listen to the parents and they don't want to go home. It's because you're putting pressure on them. No matter how much they study, even they become professor, but because if you have, if you have answers, demons inside you, it makes you all liars anyway. John chapter 8 verse 44. You have answers, demons inside you and, you and you're lying. So how can you become a teacher? How can you say you're a teacher? Your conscience is all seared. And yet you're so shameless. And then you talk about religious freedom. So why did you come here? From answers to transgressions and your demons, you want to chase them away through the mystery of God, force your repentance, even though ancestors, demons come inside you and make you lie and, and make you commit murder. You want to get rid of all of that. Let's all live with this kind of heart, with the mystery of God. Let's all change our lives. Why is South Korea like this? Everybody wants to, all, all those people who went to top schools, they commit all kinds of top sins. And that, because they have the answers of demons inside you, and, and you're, you're hurting other people, and then you even end up committing murder, and you're lying because of answers of demons inside you. John chapter 8, verse 44. If you have answers of demons inside you, you can't even realize the Bible. So if you don't realize the Bible, who are, who are they? They're the ones with the answers of demons inside them. Daniel chapter 12, verse 10, you're wicked and you can't realize whether you're wicked or you have the answers of demons inside the same. So who are the wicked people? Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 3, those who, are, those who are crazy, they're the wicked people. They can't realize the Bible because of the answers of demons inside you. All of you, the, the truth of God, you know how correct it's, it's teaching us? The Bible, just like force your repentance. When I when I repent their sins as my sin, when you, why why should you do force your repentance? Proverbs twenty eight verse four. If you do force your repentance, then you're going to go against the wicked people, and you're going to end up helping the righteous. So whose side are you on? Are you not wicked that you're killing your children? You're killing yourself and you're killing your children. That wickedness. That's how wrongly we're living in this world. If you don't realize and, and you do the wrong thing, then bigger calamity will come. So you have to, write, you have, to have the right realization. If you do the right thing, then what, whatever you do, it's okay. So why do you say that is wrong and this is good? Is it, isn't it because of your greed? That is reality that we're living in. So where should you go to study so you can study to become a right human being? 
So if you go to a great place, then do you become a true human? Today, God is saying, in our country, so some books that come, come to us from, from China, they say, while your, children, while your parents are alive, you need to learn from them. I used to really respect that at one point. I used to memorize that. While my parents are alive, I need to learn from them. If you don't learn from them then, and that is why if you ask the older people, they say, oh, I'm too old now. Oh, when my, because my parents were too, too, they were too poor, so they couldn't send me to get educated. Oh, but when I was studying, they didn't teach us the Chinese, Chinese character. So do not, do not give excuses. Today, God is Almighty. God is telling us today, whether you study or not, whether you study with your head, which is the wickedness inside your head, which is the IQ, will make you into a wicked person. You have all the demons inside you, James chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. It's recorded there. And that is why if you learn a lot of worldly education, that makes you into a, a wicked person. So does that mean that you shouldn't study? No. God's command says you have to be you have to be the best in the world. First Corinthians chapter nine verse twenty. When you become when you become the best, why should you learn on that? Because when you learn it correctly, the worldly things, then you can use it to spread the gospel. If you don't even know that and you say that you're 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 being a good Christian, you don't even know the basics. How can you say you're a good Christian? And that is why even though you go to church, you're faced with all kinds of calamity and that you have all kinds of sickness. Inside church, there should be all only love. And when you're in Christ, you should all be one. But so why there's so many denominations? Our South Korea is such a small country, but there's more than 500 denominations. Isn't that pathetic? They're all going to hell. That's what God is saying. It's not me. Romans chapter 2 verse 8. They, God is saying they're all going to go to hell. Jude chapter 1 through 19. They're all going to go to hell. So how can you say denomination will go to heaven? So today God is saying even amongst all this, even amongst difficult situation, God is giving us the way of hope. Deuteronomy chapter 28. What is, what is he telling us? Verse 1, let's read it one more time. Even though you are all disappointed, it's because you weren't educated, or because you're women, or because you're old, or because you're sick, or because, or this or that, or that, or because I can't, I'm crippled. It's okay, you can all, it can, you can all be blessed. That's why Genesis chapter 37 through chapter 50, the world, the most famous prime minister, he, he lived without parents, and he was, he was actually betrayed by his brothers and he was, he was sold away. But because Jehovah was with him, he became world famous. Even though amongst the famine times, he saved the other, his own country. So where did, he, where did he graduate from? He didn't. He didn't grow, go to kindergarten. Does that mean that you shouldn't study? No. You have to use it to spread, to spread the gospel. Today, you and me, you may be disappointed, even though you're here, because I'm so old, that's okay, you can still be done. Oh, because I haven't studied, or I'm not educated, that's okay. Oh, because I have no, no backing, it's okay, you can still be blessed. Oh, because there isn't even one thing that I'm good at, that is okay, you can still be blessed. All of you, Almighty God, this mystery of God, force of repentance, He called you with that. So you didn't just come on your own. You're, you're a demon if you say you came on your own. Without doing forced repentance, you can't go towards God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. Just because you're a pastor, does that mean you're with God? No. You, hey, you, you demon. Just because you're a seminary student, no, you dirty demon. You have to do forced repentance. God is in forced repentance. When you do forced repentance through the mystery of Christ, Christ comes inside our heart. This Christ, God is in that Christ. So in Christ, the Holy Spirit is there. Jesus is inside Christ. That is faith. And that is why without doing forced repentance, the fake church, that's why South Korea these days, within two to three years, everybody's saying, Christ, Christ Jesus, Christ, Christ. 
They're all saying that. Why? Because without that, that's not a church. They're full of demons. They're all, they're fake otherwise. That's why they say Christ. If they said Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1, if you say Christ, the mystery of God, you have to have that. If you don't have, you only say the mystery of God, you just say Christ, it's just with your lips. What kind of lie is that? Even if you're cunning, if you ask, then you should be able to answer. You just, you just did cunning and you just stole that from somebody, even though the answer might be right, but you don't know what it is. So God is telling us today, whatever situation you're in, no matter what, there's nothing, no one to trust, nothing to study. God is saying, when you study the worldly things, that you should use that to spread the God. That is not going to make you into a true, honorable man. God is telling us today. That is why, whether you're old, whether you're a woman or man, or whether you're poor or rich, or whether you're just a thief a minute ago, or whether you're a Rahab, harlot, everybody can be done. That's the, that's the incredible promise that God is giving us to your children up until now. Why are you children? Why, why did you give pressure to your children? Every day you're giving them pressure. Oh, look at that! Look at look at that son next door. He went to a good school. The parents didn't even give them money, but they 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 worked and they made their own money. Oh, look at him! Look at her! Look at the ketong next door! Look at that over there! Look at Socrates! And you see all this to your children, give them their pressure. It's because you're full of greed. You're full of the demons. Even though the things that you weren't able to do on your own, you want your children to do that for you. Isn't that what we are? Today, James chapter 1 verse 14, starting with this small greed, because of this small greed. My life is like this and my children are like that. If you confess this, and let's listen to the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. It's okay, you can still be, be blessed. Verse 1. Now it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all His commandments, which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Amen. So today, God is, what is He saying right here? What is God telling you right here? Jehovah God. If you don't understand this, then you're a fake Christian. You're a goat. You're a fake pastor, fake seminary student. You're 100% fake. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, doesn't talk about Jehovah. It only talks about God. This God, when you say God, so no matter what religions or, or sermons or anybody, it's all included when you say God. Within that, if you want to be obedient to the Word of God, up until where? Until you go to heaven, this, have, when you listen to the sermons of a deep understanding, really going to a true church, then you can say Jehovah God. And in other words, anybody can come to our, church, our school. That means that it includes everybody. Everybody can apply and get in. But when you say my student, that means that that student is a student of that church, or of, of that school. That's when, when you say Jehovah God. That's why here Jehovah God is telling us. Our church, if you're here for the first time, you say, oh, this is the first time you're hearing this. If you don't, if you don't know Jehovah 100%, you're going to hell. John chapter 17, verse 3. It, true God, Jehovah, if you don't know him, then you're going to hell. God has recorded that. True God, if you don't know true God and you go to have you go to church and you say you're a pastor or you're an elder, no matter what you are, whatever that you sow, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna reap thorns. No matter what you do, you're you're always gonna lose out. That person you're receiving Jehovah's wrath, you're going to hell. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 25. That's why if you don't know Jehovah and you go to church, they're all 100% fake. They're going to hell. 
And that's why here Jehovah God is telling us, you have to listen to that. And that is why all of you, this, the Word of God, it doesn't just end with you listening. You have to be obedient. When you're obedient in verse 2, when you're obedient in South Korea, do you, are you number one? No, in the world. God's going to raise you above everybody on, in the world. Today, when you listen to the Word of Jehovah and if you're obedient, let's read verse 2. Ready? Go. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Amen. If you just obey, if you obey, if you obey, but you still don't understand what that means. That is one heart, one way. One heart. As long as you do one heart, one heart, is forced to repentance. Christ forced to repentance. When you listen, when you do forced repentance, and after you listen to it, and what you need to do is forced to repentance, one heart. But obedience is one, one way, Jesus. That's why you go to church, but you don't even know what faith is. One heart, one way is faith. But one heart, one way, God will give it to you and you have to receive that. And yet you don't even know that you say you believe that's fake. That's 100% you're going to hell. And that's why when you say, I believe, look at their household. You don't even have peace in your heart. if you Because you don't have one heart, so you're two-faced. You're always wondering whether you... You're always torn. It's because you don't understand the other side. So you, how about you and your spouse? Is it because you don't understand the other side? That's why you, you're divorcing them? It's not because you don't understand them. What does that mean? God's mystery force your repentance if you do that then you have God's love in you then when you have without God's love you cannot understand the other person you don't even know that and you say oh it's because I don't understand them and that's why you're arguing and you have stress and that's why you have to sit with them and you have to talk to them what you and your spouse is it because you didn't converse with them that's why you hate each other and that's why you're divorcing is it because you didn't talk that's why your children are bad children is it because you don't you didn't talk to them that you and your sibling are our enemies no it's because you can't get away from dog and pig and you can't realize you're a perishing animal you can't get away from that so this will take too long so if you just are obedient that you'll be raised above top of the world God will make you top of the world you just have to be obedient Amen so then what is God telling you so here who are the who are the ones with the demons inside Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 3 Old Testament is alive it's, it's promised between you and God but those with the demons they say oh it's, it's our ancestors it's long time ago but they're denying the Bible they're full of the demons there's no reason for you to talk with them Old Testament is a promise between you with you right now so today as long as you're obedient Jehovah the word of Jehovah when you're obedient then God will raise you above all others in the whole universe that's promise from God we just have to be obedient so then this obedience whether you go abroad you'll be received you'll, you'll be blessed or whether you come to South Korea you'll be blessed so the South Koreans these days, they, they say bad things about politicians because the politicians are doing bad job. That's why our business is, why are you lying? It's, that's not what God is saying. God is saying, as long as you're obedient to my word, then whether the politicians are doing whatever they are doing, it doesn't matter. Whether you come or you go out, God will bless you. What? It's because it's a communist country, that's why it doesn't work. Is God worse than, less than communist country? Where does it say that you can't be a communist? As long as you are obedient to my word, whether you come or go out, you'll be blessed. Not only that, in verse 4, your children will do well. Not only your children, but all your business, whether you're doing whatever, everything, you'll be blessed. We're here to receive this blessing. We're here to receive this blessing. Amen? We're here to receive this blessing. So whether you were educated or you wanted to not blame your parents, just repent that if you, if you complained. That's why God said, if you complain, God's going to kill you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. You cannot complain. Why? Whether they're bad politicians or whether education system is bad, that is not going to control you. Almighty God, as lo if you're obedient or not, that is what's going to make the difference. Let's all change our lives tonight. 
Do you wish to do well tonight? Do you want your children to live? Let's all receive this blessing. I have to live, and my children have to live, and our country have to live. It doesn't matter whether you're educated or not. Even if you were educated a little bit, and you know the basics, then Joseph, when he became top prime minister, then that, that would become a lie. No, it's not. That is why if you don't have if you don't have knowledge, then you're gonna die. You, you're gonna be you're gonna be doomed. Hosea chapter four verse six. People think that knowledge goes inside your head. This IQ is among all the all the wickedness. It's it's among all the devils. Those people with all this thinking. So there is. So if you're educated, you may have a lot of thinking. And if you have a lot of thinking, does that mean that your business is gonna do well? No, they don't do well. Jehovah has to give the knowledge in your heart. The miracle will happen. Even though I'm lacking, when, when does miracles happen? When I, have, when I have knowledge in my heart, the miracles will happen right away. It's not me. It's Proverbs 2 verse 10. It's recorded there. You and me, knowledge in your heart, miracles will happen. So this knowledge, God gives it to us in our heart. But if it's in your head, then no matter what, the more you have in your head, the more you're going to be doomed. So that's why the, the fakes, Psalms chapter 5 verse 10, when you sit together and you, lie, and, you, and you meet and you come up with your own thinking, you're going to be doomed. When a country is doomed, the more meetings they have. When the world is, is doomed, the more meetings they're having. It's because they don't know. Politics and education and worldly things, that, it, that they're not going to control you, even if you're not educated, whether you, you lost time or because no matter what the reason is with, that you weren't educated, that has nothing to do with you. As long as you're obedient to the Word of God, whether you're old or whether you're a woman, it doesn't matter what you did in the past. All of you can, all, it can happen for all of you. You just have to be obedient. This is a promise from Father. Today, this obedience is faith. Faith is obedience. John chapter 3 verse 36. When you say, I believe, if God gives it to you, if God gives you this faith, then, and then you go to obedience, obedience, you have to receive one heart, one way from God. And then you follow that. That is obedience. So obedience, as long as you're obedient, then you can all be blessed. It doesn't matter about your education, whether you lost a chance or not, whether you're old or not, and you lost your chance. You just have to be obedient. That's all God is saying. That is why Moses, when he started at 70 years old, he started doing his, he started at 80 years old. So if you're 70, you're really young. He, Moses started working for God at 80 years old. So you're saying you're too old? No, stop being a dog and a pig. All of you, it can happen for all of you. What, you're a harlot? It's okay, you can still be blessed. Jesus' grandmother was, was Rahab, harlot. She, so all of you can be blessed. Whether you're educated or not, it doesn't matter. Your children can be blessed. You and you can be blessed. You just have to be obedient. And that is why this obedience, I want to share with you today. We don't, we don't have a lot of time. So after you receive the Holy Spirit, then... Obedience comes after that. Let's look up 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. After you receive the Holy Spirit, so what do you need to do so you can be obedient? And that is why living faith, you have to carry into action. So then you receive the Holy Spirit and you chase all the de demons out from your heart. And after that, what do you need to do so you can be obedient? Otherwise, other than that, there's no obedience. That's why, whether you're educated or not, whether you are, are whatever you did in the past, and when you're obedient, the water becomes into wine. All of your wishes will come true. The miracle will happen. Miracle will happen. All your life will change. That's what, that's what obedience will bring you. That's the first thing that Jesus did. First obedient thing that Jesus did. When he changed water into wine in John chapter 2, verse 5 through 11. Today, all of you are here. You may have lost your chance, or what, maybe you weren't educated, and that you're full of complaints up until now. 
or because you met wrong parent, bad parents, or because you you were born at the wrong time. All that time, there there was that there were there were certain rules in time, and that they made me not or the the Japanese. They took my grandfather away, and they made. That's what I did. I complained about all that. Oh, that sounds really smart, right? So if you're full of complaints, God will kill you Himself. No matter what kind of complaints, God will kill you. And that's why God is saying, do not complain. Do not blame anybody. But be thankful without ceasing. The miracles will continue to happen. This is the promise that God has given us. Let's, we're here to receive this blessing. We're here to receive this blessing. It will happen for all of you. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. The conclusion is that it can happen for all of you. You just have to be obedient. So do not, do not be disappointed. Do not ever say that it's not going to happen for you. Because it can for, happen for everybody. At the prayer center up there, when, when um, the young people, when I pray for them, more than half went and saw heaven. And when they drank the water, they were all drunk, just like just like it turned into wine. Even right now, miracles will happen as long as you're obedient. And that's why First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, this giving service and this, if you if you don't have Holy Spirit inside you and you and you give service to God, this this service, First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20, the demon will take this, the devil will take, and even you're praising, you're praising to the to the demons. That's why obedience is above giving service. Obedience. No matter who you are, you, everybody can be obedient. Doesn't matter what your past is, it has nothing to do with you. Today, miracles will happen. All of your wishes will come true. All your children will be more blessed. You'll do better and better. Let's all take this, let's all receive this blessing. Let's save our children. Your businesses, let's make it do better and better. And you just have to be obedient. So this obedience, how do you become obedient? First Peter chapter 1 verse 2. You have to receive the Holy Spirit when you, you just continually do force your repentance. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. When you do force your repentance, then first you go inside Christ. Then when you go inside Christ and you receive faith as a gift, and then that's why you just have, if you don't do force your repentance, you're not going to receive faith. So if you don't do force your repentance, if you go to fake churches and they don't, they haven't even received faith, they say, I believe, I believe, they're full of lies. So all the way till you receive the Holy Spirit, we've already said, we've already shared all that. After you receive the Holy Spirit, what do you need to do to become an obedient person? So after you receive the Holy Spirit, that means you've chased the demons out. So if you have answers as demons inside you, you have all kinds of sicknesses, and you're full of lies. That's why you have the demons inside you. So then similar demons will continue to come inside. Matthew chapter 12 verse 45. There's eight demons inside you coming in and out, coming in and out. So you don't even know what you're doing. You're going crazy. Then you go end up in, go to jail and you say, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, because it was a demon inside you. After you see the Holy Spirit, then you can be obedient. So here after you see the Holy Spirit, what, what do you need to do so you can be obedient? As long as you do this, then, you, then your life will change. Your destiny will change. Your children, your parents, no matter how they died, it, that has come down to you. So that's why if you go to hospital, the doctor will ask, how did your parents die? Oh, they died of liver cancer. Then you're going to die from liver cancer. That's what the doctors will tell you because they know it's hereditary. Everybody knows everything is hereditary. When I was going to school, my lips there, my lips are, are very thick because I try to say F, F. I used to bite down on my, my lips so I can say it correctly. That's why my lips are so thick. So if I, if I give excuses, then I have to repent. Because if you give excuses, you're worse than a dog. Jude chapter 1, 18 and 19. If you give excuses, then you're worse than a dog. So why do you do that? So that I can repent. Because I'm sure all of you have the same thing. So let's be obedient. 
that change our lives. You can be raised above in the world. So if you're not obedient to the word and you think that you can be above everybody, that person, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, you're going to be all tested and you're going to face, you're going to be ashamed. Every, there are people in, the, in our country who, who want to be top of the world, but God is saying if you're not obedient, then you cannot be top of the world. It's the word of God. You have to listen to the word of Jehovah, and if you're obedient, then you'll be a top of the world, and your children, and your country, and even the animals will all be blessed. We're here to receive this blessing. We're here to receive this blessing. Amen? We're here to receive this blessing. If you are not obedient and, you, and you're, going to be, you're going to do well, no, God's not going to leave you like that. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. What, you want to be successful on your own? You're going to continue to face calamity and, and problems, and you're going to be doomed. That is the word of God, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. And that is why I just say, according to the Bible, and I say, you're all going to be doomed. Or, or if you are obedient, didn't, then you're going, to be, you're going to be blessed. You ask me, that's what I'm going to tell you. You'll be doomed in two, two years, but if you, or faster, in within days you could be doomed. It's according to the word, and that's why the word of God, it is all prophecy. Second Peter chapter one verse twenty and twenty one. It's all recorded there. It's not my word. So no matter what situation you're in, if you're obedient, you're going to change your life. All of you. So you're here to receive this blessing. Let's read with one voice. Ready? Go. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with His blood, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Amen. But that's really strange. When you're reading the Bible, you must be better than me. This verse, I've read it hundreds of thousands of times. I, I have recorded there, and, and when I meditate on this, and because I've, I've touched up the, the, the I've, I've been meditating for so many times that, that the papers all, so I had to copy it four or five times and then get it coded. That's how many times I've, I've looked at it. And now I know a little bit, but look at you. You don't even look at the Bible, you just look at me. This word, 24 hours, you have to eat it as your spiritual food. That is being humble. Some people say, ask, what is, what is humble? Can you make it short and explain to me? God turns into Lord and, and helping you. That is, that is being humble. And if God doesn't help you, then, then you're arrogant. So when does he not help you? When the world thinks and God thinks, if you don't know any of that, then you're being arrogant. And that is why God is saying you have to know you have to know exactly the worldly things. First Corinthians, Corinthians chapter nine verse twenty. First Timothy chapter six verse four. So then, let's be obedient. Then you can still be blessed. But I don't know anything. But that's okay. You can still be obedient. So here, God said, obedience is faith. John three verse thirty six. So faith. There is a beginning faith, just like marathon runner. There's a start and there's a goal in. So faith is a beginning and goal in is obedience. So if you're obedient, you're going to go to heaven. When you're obedient, the miracles will happen. That's why after you receive the Holy Spirit, here it says after you receive the Holy Spirit, after that, what do you need to do? No. You already, you already skipped that. It's holy. That is why you don't know what it means. Holy. There is nobody on earth that is holy. Jesus, First Peter chapter 1, 15, 16, he says, Jesus said, I am holy. Because I am holy, you too have to be. Your behavior has to be holy. This is what Jesus told us. So then here, it says you have to be holy. But because you try that, it doesn't work. Your behavior has to be holy. Just because it says to be holy after you use the Holy Spirit, it says the holy, but you don't become holy. That's, 
So if it doesn't work, why? it doesn't matter how much you say. This holiness, just because when you open it, oh, when you do forced repentance, when you eat the word as your spiritual food and you, you, you revive your conscience and your behavior changes, that is being holy. That's what this means. But all of you, you just look at the outside, it says holy, but you don't know what's inside. Why? Because you took that. You stole that. You told... You, you, you did cunning. You took somebody else's answer. Here today, obedience. You have to be holy. That's why when? After you see the Holy Spirit, you receive the Holy Spirit. After you receive the Holy Spirit, God will give you the Holy Spirit in your heart. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, in your heart. So then, the devils inside you will be chased away. Holy Spirit will come and chase it all away. So when, you're, when the Holy Spirit comes and chases the devils away, and that place then the word of God has to go inside there the word doesn't just go in by itself God's mystery force your repentance when you do Christ come inside your heart so the word of Christ you and me will turn into the Lord that who helps you will change you so that word when it comes that is faith John chapter 5 verse 38 the word, if you, if you memorize it with your head, then you become crazy and you're going to kill yourself. And after that, you're going to kill Jesus. And after that, you're going to kill the third and fourth generation. And you're going to go to fake church and you're going to, you're going to memorize the Bible and put it into your head. And that's why your household is in shambles. Your children don't listen to you. And then, and then they say, oh, pastor, you have to make your sermon short. That's what happens. But if the word goes inside your heart, it's sweeter than honey, and you become a holy person, and miracles will happen, then you're going to do well right away, and your children will do well, that you're going to want to eat more and more and more. Look at, if I look at your eyes, you're saying, give me more and more and more. But if you go to fake church, they're all falling asleep. They're, they fall asleep so well. Why? Because it's, it's killing them. Why? Because the word goes inside your head, you're going to kill yourself. Force your repentance through a mystery. If Christ doesn't go inside you, then the word will not go inside your heart. If the word doesn't go inside your head, it goes inside your head, then you're killing yourself, you're killing Jesus, you're killing your generation, future generation. And then you're going to actually do bad things to the country. And that's why at the fake churches, your, your people fall asleep. They don't want to listen to it. Why? Because they don't want to die. But here, look at you. You want more and more and more. Why is it different? Because of the mystery, the word will go inside your heart. You have to cleanse your heart, chase the demons out, and the word will come inside your heart. And so then, who is this word? John chapter 1 verse 1 is God. So then God will go inside your heart. What happened in Philippians chapter 2 verse 13? Inside your heart, God, through force your, when you do force your repentance, the, the word God will go inside your heart. The, the word of God will move your heart to make you do this and that. The miracles will happen. Then you're going to be successful. You're going to change your life. St starting right away, right away, right away. You're going to be, let's receive this blessing. That's why 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, holy, through the word, when you pray and when you force your repentance, when you, do, when you pray with force your repentance to the mystery of Christ, when you cleanse your heart, then Christ goes inside your heart first and cleanse your heart through the mystery of Christ, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. So when Christ is head of church and, head, and the body of, of church, when Christ comes inside your heart, then God and Jesus and the word will come inside you will make you very clean. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 will cleanse, our, cleanse us. Only the word will cleanse us. So when we are very clean through the word of God, so then this word is yours and my spiritual food. So you and me, when inside your heart, any religion, any fake church, they don't know about conscience. They don't know how to revive your conscience. And that's why the command of God, God is saying, have good conscience. That's a command from God. But nobody does that at fake churches. That's a fake church. So at our church, if you don't revive your good conscience, even though it's a command from God, then I know that it's a fake church. The hidden person inside your heart, the three conscience, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, 
And that's why even the Chinese, Chinese word for, for Chinese character for your heart, there's three different spots. That means that, three, that, that, is, that is your heart. If you don't revive your three consciences, your behavior will not change. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Inside your heart, force, when you do force your repentance, when you have Christ in your heart through the ministry of Christ, and in there, if you don't put the word of God so that Christ will eat the word, so Christ, word of Christ, John chapter 1, verse 1, Jesus, Christ Jesus will come inside your heart, then God will come inside you after that, and that is faith. And at that time, just with Jesus, you will be, you will going to revive your three conscience. Then you're going to have good conscience. That's command from God. First Peter chapter three verse sixteen. So when you have good conscience, and after that, you're going to go towards God. You're going to have clean conscience, and after that, your 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 behavior will change, and you're going to revive your good conscience. clean conscious then your behavior will change into holy then you're going to be obedient you are here to receive this blessing tonight this is how you are obedient so then Jesus is obedience Jesus up until what how much Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 through 11 he's obedient till death so when you say Jesus That means that you're going to lay down your, li your life till you, to death. When you give your heart and your, and your life, then God will fill your treasuries with money. I, we shared this in early morning because I received this too. I receive this blessing all the time. If you don't receive this blessing, you're going to go, going to, go to hell. That's what God is saying. If you don't receive blessings that God gives you, that is the only way for you to go to heaven. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15. You don't want to live as a a s a poor beggar then you're going to go to hell come to your senses obedience whether you're educated or not doesn't matter even if you're a thief on Pultin now whether you're harlot or not doesn't matter if you go inside Christ you're going to be a new creation 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 when you do force your repentance you're going to become a new creation blessed person that person can be obedient let's all change our life say amen amen whether you're educated or not It does not matter. You can still be blessed. So do not blame your parents. Do not, do not blame your parents. What does that mean? Today, let's put an end to that. Do not, do not blame anybody. You can all be blessed. No matter what, you'll be blessed. Do not blame other people. Whether you're educated or not, do not blame anybody. Even if you're not educated, you'll still... or you're educated, it doesn't matter. As long as you're obedient. Obedience after you receive the Holy Spirit and, and the Word of God, after, if you eat a lot and revive your conscience and your behavior become like Jesus, become holy, and when you're obedient, miracles will happen. Let's all be obedient. Let's live according to the Word of God. Amen? Then it'll happen for all of you. So this is a person who's obedient. Up until it works, you have, you have to continue to do that. You just have to love God until it happens. Let's change our life and live happily. What? You think because the politicians or the economics is bad? So why is it that North Korea is constantly being, putting their hand out? Africa, what happened to Africa? UN is always helping them and giving them so much food. It's not because of economics. You have to be obedient. If you're obedient, you're raised above everybody in the world. And that's why I'm very confident when I say, as long as there's you and your children, those who are obedient to the Word of God, whether you're old or whether you're young, whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, whether you're like, like Rahab, harlot, or whether you're a thief, everybody can be blessed. if you're obedient in South Korea because God gave us this mystery of, of God because this forced repentance was given to South Korea our South Korea will be above, uh, above the whole world will be above the whole world according to the word of God let's all receive this blessing Amen this is such an incredible promise Holy Spirit will be given to your, to your heart and after that when you're holy 
through the word of God, when you pray for your repentance and you continue to eat the word of God and you revive your three conscience and you become a holy person, just like Jesus, your behavior will be holy. When you're obedient at that time, that's the obedience that God wants. Miracles will happen with that obedience. And that's why even though this, because I'm, I, this is how I live, that's why miracles happen. That's why you look at me and you say, how come miracles happen? This is a difference. So anybody can happen. Anybody can do this. That's why God is saying, anybody can go inside Christ. Because why? Anybody can go inside Christ. Whether you're so do not blame and do not complain that you weren't educated. Or even if you're educated, do not be arrogant. Whether you're educated or not, it doesn't matter. Whether you're a man or woman, it doesn't matter. So then, so then to your children, do not tell them to go to top schools. Studying is the same. Whether, whether, you, stu- whether you lie a lot, whether you lie a little, it, there isn't that much difference. You can go wherever school you want to go to. So do not give pressure to your children. Where? You want to put a lot of demons inside your children? God is showing us that's not true. If I have pressure, so you want to give pressure to your children? So do not do that. Between Jesus and the disciples, they weren't even educated. Even Joseph wasn't educated. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be educated. So you you should do whatever you want to do. So do not give pressure to your children. Do not blame them. Do not ruin them. Stop that. Why? Because children belong to God. So your children, give them peace in their heart. So why shouldn't you give pressure to your parents? You ch- don't, do not give pressure to your, to your children so that they're going to they're gonna lie to you. Saying, telling them, study, study, study. Why do you want to tell them to study, study, study? If you look at the parents, their parents, these are the parents that they didn't do well in their school because they didn't do well. That's, that they're actually putting their pressure on their children, putting out their stress on their children. You have, you have to repent. Parents have to repent. Just give peace to your, your children. Today, when you go home, just say, be free. Then your children are going to say, oh, is my parents trying to test me? But continue to do that. Because if you're obedient, then God will raise you above the universe. So that's why when I, to, to my children, I don't tell them to study because I don't tell them to, to learn lies because it's not the truth, that's why it's all lies. Today it might be right, but tomorrow it might not work. So do not be so held up by the worldly things. It's okay for you to do that, but it's still okay if you don't do that. But, but that doesn't mean that you should be lazy, but you have to be diligent as long as we are obedient so do not worry about your past if you're obedient the miracles will happen if you're obedient the water will turn into wine right now right now spiritual power will be given to you let's all receive this blessing amen let's all pray almighty father we only lived complaining and I have lost my chances because of this or that. I lost my my chance, and I was full of complaints. I was so disappointed, and that I I gave only pressure to my children. Help us to all be erased of this sin today. Anybody, if you are obedient, then you can receive this promise. My Father, you said that you will lead us to be obedient, even right now. We just have to co- revive our consciences, help us to go down this path of obedience. When we are obedient, then water will turn into wine. This miracle will happen. Help us to all be leaders of the, of the world. Just like Joseph, help us to all receive this blessing. Today, starting right now, we believe it will happen for all of us. All this we pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving and blessings. Amen.